What's up guys, this is Swordfish1390 here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Persona 3 for the PlayStation 2. Now, a lot of you already know that I reviewed Persona 3 about a year ago when I started reviewing. Um, what I'm going to be doing is, since I got Windows Movie Maker down pat for the most part, I'm going to be redoing a lot of reviews that I thought could have been better. So, so I'm going to be doing Persona 3, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to be doing Persona 4, pretty much most of the SM, a lot of the SMT games, if not all of them. Um, Rogue Galaxy, maybe Stars from 3 and or 4. Um, I'm, I'm just going to play it by ear for now. I hope you guys enjoy the review. Uh, I tried to find as much gameplay footage as I can. Bear with me if the gameplay footage doesn't match up. So let's go into the story of Persona 3. The story in Persona 3 is, to put it simply, um, unique, epic, great, outstanding, and it, this game, along with pretty much all the SMT games, it avoids all cliches, any generic RPG elements that you are familiar with and you that you hate dealing with, they are not present in this RPG, okay? That is how most of the SMT games are. This game avoids um, the whole typical medieval swords and world of swords and sorcery, kings and castles and queens and sires and and, uh, and ride unicorns. That is not in this game. No, this game, believe it or not, if you if you can imagine this being an RPG, this takes place. This takes place in. Uh, a realistic uh, Japan, modern day Japan. That, as you could see, the game has amazing anime cutscenes, and I wish there were more of them because a lot of the regular cutscenes are just clicking X, looking at the dialogue box, and looking at the looking at the art picture. But you could forgive it because the voice acting, first of all, is outstanding. <coughs> you do you do really get to relate to these characters, um, and. Yeah, and the artwork is amazing. I just wish there were more anime cutscenes because these are great. But let's get right into the story because I just I'm gonna waste time here. But um, the story in Persona Three, you play as the silent unnamed protagonist who moves to a new city called Iwatodai, a fictional town in Japan. Why do you move to Iwatodai? Because your parents have been re have recently passed away, and you need to move to a new school, and you need someone to take care of you. So you are moving to the Iwatodai dormitory near the Gecko Con High School, which is where you're going to be attending class from now on. As you as you live in this dorm for the next couple days, you'll notice that things slowly begin to seem out of whack. First of all, your pot when you play the game, you'll wonder why everyone's turning into coffins at midnight, and you know everything starts happening. You'll notice you'll begin to learn about the mysterious dark hour, which is a hidden time that exists between one day and the next. So there's pretty much a 25th hour. Believe it or not, the dark hour. What it is is basically like a dark manifestational time, and pretty much what happens in the dark during the dark hour is first of all you'll see all electricity malfunctions. Every all the electricity except except for special equipment and whatnot turns off, and all people except for the persona users um, turn into coffins, and that's when the shadows come out. Shadows pretty are creatures that feed on the minds of their victims. Shadows pretty much search for any human not in a coffin. As you can see, there are coffins right there, and then they are completely oblivious to all that is happening. At midnight, like I said, you'll be able to explore Tartarus. Tartarus is a labyrinth that, at, believe it or not, your high school turns into at midnight. And that is pretty much... Tartarus is basically just a training center. <laughs> for you, your characters, and your personas to level up, gain experience, etc., and prepare for the upcoming bosses. And there are times where a full moon will come, and you'll be thrust into a life-or-death battle. So you always gotta train whenever you can. If you have, if you have absolutely nothing to do during that day, train. So that's pretty much how that works. Here's another anime cutscene. I wish I see this cut particular cutscene. I wish it would happen all every time you enter Tartarus because this cutscene's so cool. Except you know maybe not show their astonished expressions because they're probably used to seeing Tartarus by the time you get to the end of the game. But this 
along with a lot of the other cutscenes, are just great. Um, like I said, the story is great, but does the gameplay live up to it? Well, <coughs> watch the rest of the you to find out. The gameplay in Persona 3, battle system wise, works like your typical turn based JRPG. It's not exactly revolutionary for the RPG genre, but the cool thing is that this game is heavily, heavily reliant on exploiting your character on your, your enemy's weaknesses. Your enemies can do the same thing to you, but let me let me explain what happens. If you are lucky, you can hit an enemy with a critical hit, but that's that's really not likely. That doesn't happen too often. But you can analyze the enemy during battle and learn their weaknesses. Some enemies may repel a certain lightning, hit you back with lightning, some enemies may be weak to lightning, some enemies may you know, all this kind of stuff could happen. Um, if you happen to hit an enemy that with an attack that's weak against, it'll be knocked down and the attack will be able to act again. Once all enemies are knocked down and your party consists of two or more characters, you can unleash an all-out attack which dogpiles on the enemy and deals massive amounts of damage. You'll gain experience after battle just like most RPGs. The flow of battle works like this. You hit an enemy in... You, you you and your party members uh, travel through Tartar traverse through Tartarus and you have to hit the enemy with your weapon to enter battle. Along and now I don't have any footage of this, but um, along with just the battle system, there's also the day to day living system, which a lot of people hate and a lot of people love. I personally love it because and because of people who usually who hate it are Persona One and Two fanboys. But that's beside the point. What you do is you go, you uh, live just like a normal high, high school student. You wake up during the day, you'll go to school Monday through Saturday, except for holidays and Sundays. You go to school, school ends, you have the, you can control your character, walk around school, explore town, whatever, hang out with certain people, and hanging out with certain people will forge a bond called a social link. And what a social link is, is it's a, a special bond, um, and as you increase that bond it enhances your ability to strengthen the personas you create in the velvet room and that's pretty much it for that and you can also go to Tartarus at night here are my final thoughts for this game Persona 3 is <coughs> a very in-depth um, very interesting great story it's just one of the best games i have ever played in in my life this is a, a fantastic example of how rpgs should be avoiding these generic cliches the battles while they're not too crazy special they are intense and they show that a battle system doesn't have to be too crazy and and you know to, to be a great game Battles are fast paced, so you never have to worry about getting lost. I, I would just, just some of the item management felt a little clunky because when you access, when you go to the main menu, you only have access to your main character. So to equip your party members, you have to talk to them and view their status. It's, it's pretty gay, but it, it, you, you get used to it. Um, it, this is a 70-hour game, and if you can get over its very minor flaws, you are in for a unique, dark. And, and very memorable experience. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Peace out. Swordfish out.